Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Population. 
we need to bring people to the table. We need to make sure that not only we continue to do the work that we're doing, but we hold accountable the rest of the cities and the county to do their share as well. The county has lots of money that they're sitting around that they have yet to spend specifically on the homeless issue and mental health issues. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so regarding the homeless, I'd like to also build on that um, county re um, responsibility that they have. They're receiving a lot of funding and they have a lot of land actually in Santa Ana. The county owns uh, large tracts of land behind the, the train station in certain industrial areas. And we really should assess what assets are available that the county could leverage to help uh, ease, ease the burden of this. They really need to step up and pay their fair share. Uh, I also know that I've also worked with the homeless in Los Angeles and downtown LA, uh, distributing production, excess production food to, to homeless communities. And it's, it's a very diverse population. So uh, one of the things that I think would help is for the sub controlled substance distribution and for homeless services, we might want to think about zoning them and, and conducting those services in areas outside of the neighborhoods because they're not compatible populations, you know. Um, and we already have some parts of the city that are already classified as, um, you know, safe and away from schools and, and residences. I'd also designate, okay, all right, that's all right. The homelessness, it's been a very complex question, but in reality, we need to not tolerate it. it which this should have been something preventative. Now we're a city that's being reactive. Um, we need to deal with it immediately and not, and not tolerate it. Our city cannot be the way it is. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't like driving down the street and seeing what is going on. I don't want my children to see it, and I don't think your children should see what's going on. You know, I work with the Exchange Club, and we housed homeless vets. It was a rehabilitation center. That is the answer for the homeless. Just sheltering them is not the answer. We need to make sure that there's accountability throughout Orange County. Our city no longer is going to tolerate and be the dumping ground for Orange County. We are the capital of Orange County. Why are we tolerating this? This brings back the quality of life. Don't let it get to this point. Don't let it become the landscape. Thank you. Hello everyone, David Penaloza for Ward 2. Um, the county also owns a lot of land outside of Santa Ana. You know, for years we've been taking the brunt of this issue and, it, and it's causing our quality of life and our businesses to decline and deteriorate. What we need to do here is provide transitional and permanent supportive housing versus opening another shelter in our city. Another shelter is just going to enable them. Things like a needle exchange is just going to enable the problem and make it bigger. We need to transitional permanent housing, like Wise Place, for example. Wise Place is a great facility, and you don't see the, the problem that we see around the, the bus terminals or the armories here at Del Hay Park. These neighborhoods and this park and the school is affected every winter because of, of what goes on, and, and it needs to end. We need to put pressure on the county and the neighboring cities to do their fair share. You know, everyone needs to, to, to join in this and, and, and help alleviate the problem. The, uh, in regards to the homeless issue, <clears throat> my opponent and his colleagues two years ago neglected the issue. Out of 34 cities in Orange County, we became, our civic center became a third world tent city. That is unacceptable. 33 other cities did not have the magnitude of problem that we have. And then they, at that time, myself and others had asked, Council, we need to do something. And they said, oh, we're going to collaborate, we're going to reach out to others. It was all talk. Nothing happened. What we really need to look at is how we're going to address it for Santa Ana. I think the permanent supportive housing project is something that we should really look at, but more shelters is not the answer. Anaheim has a shelter, but they have barriers of entry. Not anybody can just show up and go in. We have a 400-bed shelter that our, my opponent approved, and that's unacceptable. It was bad decisions, and that's the kind of thing we need to avoid in the future. Thank you. Well, homelessness, I want to say, yes, we do get homes, but I think the problem is collaboration. And Judge Carter is start working with Santa Ana, Santa Ana Police Department, and the county. The county, we find out that he has $2.2 billion. That those monies were for those purposes. 
How are you going to fix it? After they were removed from the riverbed and the blast of the clouds, where do you think they were going to go? Through their neighborhoods. The Santa Ana Police Department has been working very, very close with Judge Carter addressing this issue. Unfortunately, the northern and south part of the county are not working in Santa Ana. They just want Santa Ana to take the burden. I think we have to work with this uh, council, with the cities, and you know what? Let's face it, this is not our issue by ourselves. Residents have to attend the council and uh, uh, the meetings and say, folks, your opinion. We need it now. Miguel Mike Gonzalez, work to homeless people. Uh, as the city council will join the team. There's already people working with the county, the uh, few different cities working about the homeless uh, issues. But I believe that the problem is not the homeless people. The problem is that we, all, we not only have homeless people, we have drug dealers, we have prostitution, and we have a lot of stuff. We need to, to, to concentrate, to really do something for them. Really put some time and, and uh, interview them to see who they are. Criminals, prostitutes, drug dealers, or homeless. I've been homeless myself for two months, and I get better. I agree with you that homelessness is a very big problem here in Santa Ana, mainly because you've got to understand a little bit of the history of the homelessness. Homelessness. It just didn't occur within the last few months. It didn't occur in the last few years. It has been an ongoing problem for probably the last 60 years. I worked for the city manager's office in the mid-1980s. There was a lawsuit because there was a movement by our city council and uh, our mayor, Pulido, to remove the homelessness from the area of the civic center because there was already, a, they were starting a little tent city there right in our civic center. Well, you can imagine, if, in, in case you don't know what happened, the loss, there was a lawsuit filed against the city of Santa Ana. And guess who won? The homelessness. So, what we need to do, um, as you, as echoed here by my colleagues who are running also for a state position, is I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, slow down just a tad, the translator is having a tough time keeping up with all of you guys. Okay, uh, there is some breaking news on the homeless issue. Just this afternoon, Governor Brown signed a law into effect authorizing cities to ask counties to use their unusable land if they're not using for one dollar a year to house homeless. So we need to get on top of that. Okay, our next question begins with you, Nalina. And this is another tough question. With a little bit $17 million deficit in our budget and a sales tax on the ballot in November that possibly could fail, what are we going to do about renegotiating contracts with the POA, SIEU, and the City Employees Unions that their pensions uh, are eating up most of our money? What's going to happen? Cities are on the verge of bankruptcy and we are at the very forefront of this, but we're not alone. Cities are going bankrupt. We need some kind of exit plan <coughs> to pare down this money. So they're all tough questions, but this is a very uh, controversial question because you know we need our police, right? We we need to be assured that we are in a safe community, and we provide that for our police officers, and they do deserve to get equal pay for the the risking their lives out there for us. So, however, we need to have a fine balance between uh, the. The pension for the police officers, the salaries for our regular city uh, city employees. So we are facing a, de a deficit, and if we don't work together, we're going to have to have layoffs, and we don't want that. We want to keep our, our people, our police officers employed, 
And the way to do that is we need to look at wasteful spending. Where is that spending going on and we need to eliminate it. We need to look at services that are not necessary. There are some services that can be done by our very own city employees. Why are we outsourcing? That shouldn't happen. We need to keep our, our people here employed. Miguel Mayo Gonzalez, work to As a business owner, I have been working all my life with budgets. So we just need to negotiate. We need to work with, with uh, budgets. We need to see what's going on. If numbers, money, it's all about money. Uh, meeting up with the, with the uh, contractors, meeting up with the employees, uh, get some source of uh, help from different other uh, companies, other people, other groups. We, work to, we need to work together and realize that we need our police officers. We need to be safe. So we really need to, to understand that budgets are not going to be an issue. We need to understand that what is the priority for our citizens, for our, our, our city of Santa Ana. Thank you. Self-tax is going to be an innovation and it's going to be up to every single one of you. And you have to look at it in two different ways. As a resident, as a city owner, as a business. What is it that you are thinking of doing at the November 6th election? We need the resources, we need the money, we need the funding. Supposedly this is coming on bankruptcy in two years. Are we going to allow it to happen? It's going to be up to every single one of us. At the end of the day, whatever the resources that we need as a city to continue working, one for me is essential, is the police department. Why? Because of the issues that we have in our city are challenging. And as today, I can tell you that they are working. Yes, they do have the funding and they do need more, more, more money, but at the end of the day, it's going to be your decision. What is the you want to put up first? Your safety? Your taxes, we need more time. <laughs> well, one thing that we really need to understand right now is what we're dealing with. When I talk to different bargaining units here in the city, they come up with different numbers, and they're not really sure what the budget truly is. We need to have a forensic audit. We need to really understand, be truthful with ourselves, and have a transparent uh, process as far as negotiating and bargaining. When the other thing what we need to do is we need to stop looking at the situation as if we're going to choose between cutting which essential service. You know, do we get rid of our cops? Do we uh, not have folks stout the parks? No, we need to actually generate revenue. We need to actually engage in economic development. We need to stop wasteful spending. Uh, it doesn't take an experienced veteran on the council to go through that budget and know there's quite a bit of wasteful spending. And I can find it and I'd be happy to cut it. Again, we need to generate revenue. That's essential. This council hasn't done it. We need to do it. Thank you. The question shouldn't be, how are you going to appropriate money to this department or that department? The question should be, like Phil said, how are you going to generate that revenue? Our city has been stagnant. The council has not done the right job at moving the city forward, growing our, our tax base. Instead, you know, they jump straight to, to taxes, and that's not appropriate either. Uh, we need to look at how we can grow our revenue, you know, uh, facilitate businesses, facilitate planning, uh, make, make that grow. You know, when someone at home, you know, a, a couple is expecting a baby, they don't say, you know what, we got to not pay our gas or, or water bill because we're going to provide for this baby. No, you know, you start driving for Uber, you start driving for Lyft, you find that second job, you find that source of income. There's so many ways in our city where we can generate revenue with all these empty buildings and empty lots that are just sitting there unused. Uh, uh, with property tax that's going this, a business tax that's going, uh, that's missing, that we're not capitalized on. Um, and it's something that we should definitely do. And, uh... Well, this is a fact of this question because this is what I do for a living. Every single day, I create revenue for companies, failing companies, and our city is failing. And we need to be innovative in how to create revenue. 
when I call the police, when you need a police officer, um, I'm sure you want them to get there at less than 10 minutes. Right now we can't do that. And I'm not willing to jeopardize our public safety and our quality of living because we can't think outside the box. We really need to allocate the funds to make sure that we create the revenue essential to make sure that our public safety is not jeopardized at all. So again, it's about creating revenue. It's not about cutting. We already have issues with our public safety. Do we really want to jeopardize that again? Even make it even worse than what it has been? No, we want to support them. We want to make sure we give them the tools necessary. We want to make it competitive. Thank you. Okay, so pensions and uh, unions. I grew up in a union household, so I know how important those union benefits are. I had, I had a, an edge and advantages that my neighbors did not have because my dad had, a, you know, had decent benefits. And I think any working person should have something to show for their lifetime of labor, uh, which would mean a pension, and they should have you know, be able to, to retire and have a have a decent, you know, life after their work. So I think also that we've cut to the bone in the city. I think we still are missing a lot of our park staff. We don't have any park rangers. I think we've, we've all felt that, that, that fall in safety. And so I think we do need to focus on revenue. And because of my background in creative industries, creative industries in California generate over $407 billion. They employ over 1.6 million people just in California. So I have ties to these three industries that are already here in the county. They're tourism technology and TV production. They all are multi-billion dollar industries and they're already here. Thank you. When you start talking about budgets and revenues and, 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 and unions and whatnot, you know, uh, POA is one of the big gorillas in, in the room and they take up a lot of our budget, uh, over 50% of our budget. Uh, they, we, when I was on the city council, we had a reserve. Before I left, I said, watch, look down, be away, go right through our reserve like nothing. And that's exactly what they did. We no longer have that. The one cent tax that's on there right now, uh, literally, it's going to go to be away. They don't want some of it. They want all of it. They've been informed me that they want to be the number one paid POA, POA in the nation. And it's ironic that, that some of the people that they are endorsing are talking about different things. They want us to fit the bill for all of this stuff. They're talking about creating revenue, but they're not saying how to create revenue. It's just a concept of the theory for them. As a city council member, I promoted Shop Santa Ana, keeping Santa Ana dollars in Santa Ana. Four, seven million dollars, take that back, a million dollars was being generated out of four square miles. If we could capture just 10% of that billion, that billion dollars, 750 million was being spent outside. Let's keep it in Santa Ana, we don't have to raise taxes. Paul Gonzalez for Ward 2. Um, with respect to pensions, I, I agree with a lot of what's been said in terms of the fact that our hardworking public servants, our police officers, and our city employees, uh, they, they dedicate their lives to serving our community. Um, and as long as they're providing us high quality services that we deserve, then they deserve to enjoy quality of life and retirement. So to me, the answer isn't doing something about pensions, but it is about growing our economy it's about ensuring that we are expanding our tax base, our business tax base, our residential tax base, so that we have the revenue that we need to cover our pension obligations now and into the future. We need to make it easier to do business here in Santa Ana. That's one of the common complaints I've heard, is that it's almost impossible to navigate the business permitting process. And that's one of the first things I pledge to tackle, so that we can start bringing in the revenue that our city desperately needs. The pension issue is not only in Santa Ana, the city of Santa Ana, it's all over the state. It's uh, something that's going to bankrupt pretty much every city. The way of looking at it, I, right, I believe the best thing we need to do is talk to the bargaining units because I don't know if you guys uh, are aware, but the city puts a lot of money to match the benefits for our employees. And I think that's something as city residents, we need to be part of that discussion with, with the bargaining units. We need to, uh, they pay 12% right now, I mean they pay 8%, they could go up to 12%. 4% makes a difference. We don't have to be cutting anybody, but
but the, the employees need to also help us help them because there's no way that we can um, share that that burden on us we're already taxed enough I, I just don't think there's a lot of money there there's a lot of mismanagement of funds I know how to go through a budget and I'll get you guys there also, uh, or two. Uh, well, personally, I'm not a fan of taxes. I uh, pay too much taxes already. Uh, I think before this goes to the measure, uh, well, I hope that there will be an advisory council as to where the funds will be going to, transparency and accountability for everybody, uh, especially for our residents. Uh, we do pay a lot of taxes. Our income level on average is about 50K a year for our average resident of Santa Ana. Uh, I think if we start having more positive discussions and conversations as what could happen, Personally, I think we need to uh, strengthen our tax base, self tax base, property tax bases. Uh, we need to designate certain areas for farmers and high development so we can uh, strengthen and shore up our tax base. And maybe there'll be more money at the end of the day and uh, we can start splitting it in a way that's fair and even to all uh, departments, which are very important uh, nonetheless. Thank you, board two. Building, I could go on and on and on. So that's the question. 
a lot of questions. So. The question is, what would you do if you got the sales tax increase? And what would you do if it failed? And how would you balance the budget? I think we need to have some serious discussions among all, all interested stakeholders as to who we have to get a, take a haircut uh, to the program. It's not something that I look forward to it, but I understand why the tax uh, tax sales need it. Uh, you know, preferably if it fails, again, we have those serious discussions among everybody and see what our uh, the alternatives are. Okay, so if, the, if it passes, I would really have to have the community involved in what we're going to do with that money because I believe it always goes into pet projects and never goes into what they said they're going to be doing. And I have experience in the San Diego School District, that's what always happens. And so uh, government, you can't give them any money because they'll never give it back to you. So we need to really have strict accountability. Um, I'm hoping that it's not going to pass. I'm walking every day to inform our community that it's not going to pass. And I, I believe what we can do is everybody needs to uh, share a burden of this cost. Like I said, employees need to also share a burden of the cost of what's happening in the city. The pension is going to be breaking us to the bank. It's going to break us. And I just I feel that uh, Santa Ana, we can do better. We have a lot of money. There's a lot of mismanagement of funds. We have to look where we can uh, uh, cut the duplication of services and work with other uh, nonprofit organizations, businesses, and also all other local uh, government agencies for us to provide the uh, services that our city residents need to. If the tax passes, we need to ensure that the money is spent on our residents in our communities. The money should not be spent first on um, giving raises to city employees or to the police officers. It needs to be invested in open space. It needs to be invested in youth programs. It needs to be invested in ensuring that our roads can be driven on and that our, our parks are clean and safe. If the sales tax doesn't pass, and I do not support the sales tax, so I'm hoping that it doesn't, um, we need to address economic development. We've talked about that at length this evening. We need to expand the tax base in our city in terms of, of, of um, sales tax revenue, not the sales tax rate. We also need to expand for residential uh, business, the residential tax base and ensure that we are growing our economy, not stifling it through a tax. So uh, we make the process easier for businesses to come and send us. We can continue to develop that tax base. We need to make it online so that th things are a lot easier uh, with innovative technology. This is why I, I supported the city council and champion uh, Shop Santa Ana, Shop Local, keeping those dollars in Santa Ana. We need to keep businesses keeping uh, their dollars in Santa Ana as well. We need to raise revenue without raising taxes. If it does pass, what I would recommend is something that the last eight years as a city council and a school board member, what I heard was a lot of residents talking about needing space to educate their population about the challenges or issues that they have, whether it be health or finances or immigration or anything else. A universal joint use agreement would work with the school district and the city to keep the schools open beyond 6 o'clock, from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And one day we can have 80 workshops. And one week we can have 400 workshops. This education is truly the key to breaking the, the 